Welcome to Lab 2 for Physics 187. In this lab, we will begin to examine the constellations in the sky. And our goal of this lab is going to be to look at a pattern of stars. And given that pattern, a sky map, and the specific location of those stars in the sky, be able to identify the constellation. We'll also want to be able to determine whether that constellation is a constellation that's visible all of the time, which we would call a circumpolar constellation. That would be a constellation like Ursa Major, or a part of that constellation, which you may know as the Big Dipper, which regardless of the time of year you go out, summer, winter, spring, or fall, and you look up in the northern skies, you will see the Big Dipper. Other constellations, for example, the constellation Orion, is a beautiful winter constellation, but if you go out during the summer when you're taking this online astronomy class, Orion will be a constellation woefully absent from the sky. And then there are some constellations, for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere, which never rise due to their location on the celestial sphere and our location on the Earth's surface. Let's go ahead and take a look at what virtual astronomy will look like for this particular lab, and then we'll talk about how you need to um, go through this particular experiment. Um, when you open up the experiment, you will get a series of questions that you need to fill out. Um, your latitude here. You can easily find your latitude by entering your town into Google and asking it to tell you the latitude. If you're in Vermilion, your latitude is around 42 degrees, um, but you should enter this particular latitude or stick with the default latitude, but you must enter a value into this lab. For this lab, we only want to try and identify constellations which would be visible to us if we went outside and actually looked at the sky. So make sure you check this box so that you only see the constellations that would be visible to you at this latitude. The number of constellations that we're going to identify in this lab is going to be 20. And the rest of these can just be left to the default. Once you've completed this particular lab, or these answered these questions, go ahead and click continue. And what you will get is you will get a view of the celestial sphere and a constellation in this window right here. If you have the celestial sphere, if you have the option show constellations on the celestial sphere, the constellation um, will be identified in red on that particular sphere. The pattern of constellations here may for some be immediately obvious what the constellation is, for others you may have absolutely no idea what constellation this represents. So to help you identify the constellation will be a two-step process. You have a sky map in D2L that will help you locate things on the celestial sphere. One page will show you half of the sky and you can see declination, which is the equivalent to our latitude on Earth, is labeled on this celestial sphere and right ascension, which is our equivalent of longitude, is also labeled on the celestial sphere. One of these pictures will go from six hours of right ascension to 18 hours, so zeros in the middle. We've got six hours this way and six hours in the other direction. The second page that's available to you will give you the other half of the sky where 12 hours is in the middle and we go from 6 to 18 on the other half of the sky. So these sky maps will help you locate the constellations. If you go back to virtual astronomy, you will see that you are told the number of stars that are in the constellations, and you are given their coordinates. These coordinates will help you determine where on the sky map to look for the constellation. So you can think of the declination and right ascension as helping to define a square in which you look to find the constellation. So if I look at these values for declination, I see that the largest value is 16 degrees, 16.15 degrees, and the smallest value is 11.31 degrees. 
That means I'm looking on the celestial sphere somewhere between the equator and that zero and that 30 degree line of declination that we saw on that sky map. I see that the right ascension has its largest value of 311 degrees and its smallest value of 308 degrees. So that would tell me now both the top and bottom and the side values. Now you may say, wait a minute, the sky maps you showed us had right ascension in hours and this is giving us right ascension in degrees. Sometimes right ascension is measured in hours, sometimes right ascension is measured in degrees. This will also be an exercise in converting between the two units of measurement and it's really quite simple to make that conversion. 24 hours equals 360 degrees and so to convert from right ascension in hours to right ascension in degrees or vice versa you just take your right ascension that you measure from this particular number you divide it by 360 degrees and you multiply by 24 hours and this will give you the right ascension in hours. Now again, you don't have to convert all of these values from degrees to hours. What you just need to do is you need to have a sense of where in the sky you need to look for the constellation. So you may want to convert the biggest and you may want to convert the smallest. Um, if I do a quick calculation in the math, 30 out of, um, 300 out of 360 is roughly 30 out of 36 or 10 out of 12 which is 5 out of 6 which is about 0.85 and 0.85 times 24 is you know what roughly uh, 20 hours so that tells you where in the sky you can look for this particular constellation. Once you've identified the constellation you will go to check your answers and you select the particular constellation and then finally you have to determine which of these is the appropriate visibility option for this constellation. Because we checked that box on our first screen, the last one is not going to be an option. We said please only show us constellations that are going to be visible at some time at our location so this is not an option. Of these four options, here's how you make that determination. The visibility of the stars is determined by um, their declination. And to determine whether the stars are visible or not, what you need to do is subtract your latitude from 90 degrees. If it's 45 degrees, then x would be 45. If it's Vermillion's latitude of 42.7, then x would be 47.3. If the declination of a star is greater than x, 47.3 for Vermillion, the stars will never set. If the declination of that star is between a negative x and a positive x, then the star will rise and set and will be visible some nights of the year. If the declination is less than a negative x, that star will never be visible. Now how does that relate to determining the visibility of the constellations? Well, if all of the stars have a declination greater than x, then all of the stars would be visible every night. If some of the stars have a declination greater than x, and some of them are between negative x and x, then you would pick this option right here. If all of the stars in the constellation have a declination between x and negative x, then you would pick this option right here. And if some of the stars have a declination between x and negative x, but there are a few that are very far down on the celestial sphere that would have a declination less than a negative x, then you would pick this one. And this one shows up because although we said, don't show us any constellations we can never see, there may be some constellations where we might be able to see part of them. And so those would be constellations that have stars where some of the declinations might be below that negative x. 
Once you've decided the visibility and you've selected the constellation, go ahead and check your answer. If your answer is right, you will get a message in the upper right hand box that says correct and give you a score and move on to the next constellation. Obviously, you'd like to get as high a score as possible. So the, the best score you could get would be 400. I won't take off points if you have a score less than 400, but if you're starting to get scores below 300 or 250, you're doing more guessing than actually thinking about what's going on. And since this lab is designed to build critical thinking skills, I will start to take points off if your scores start to drop below about 375. Good luck with the lab. If you have any questions, please email me.